Hello you beautiful people, it's me Nicole and today we have with us Deep Cools Matrix 40. Now this case comes at a crazy price tag but I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. We're going to build this PC together and go through all of its features and I will reveal the price tag to you only after you have a full view of what this PC case can do. Now on this PC build, we are also going to introduce some of Deepcool's very, very cool PC components which we are going to be using to accentuate this build that we're going to work on. Before we start, let's take a look at this case. This micro ATX case stands at 400 by 215 by 431 millimeters, which packs in just about 37 liters and it's a sweet spot between a mid tower and a mini ATX case which means that it takes a smaller footprint than the mid-tower and catering for a wider variety of components which the mini ITX cases usually won't be able to provide due to the restriction in size constraints. With a micro ATX case like this, we can also pack in more fans to maximize airflow potential and flexibility to incorporate an RGB look. The Matrix 40 is available in matte black as you see here and it has a single tempered glass side panel for you to showcase your hardware components in there and it's designed to be breathable with smart allocation of fans within the case to maximize airflow potential within the case. As you can see here, the front panel features a striped cutout design, right? Whereas at the back of the case, let me just show it to you, it features this crisscross design and that works pretty well together. Now if we move to the top of the case, we have the deep cool label and the case features on-off buttons, a USB 3.0 port, USB 2.0 port and a 3.5mm audio jack. Now let's remove all the panels and take a deeper look inside. So for the tempered glass panel and the other side panels, they are secured by two screws at the back of the case uh, with a slight sliding mechanism at the bottom. As opposed to many uh, PC cases where they adopt the same two screws to secure the side panels but without the sliding mechanism so it relies purely on the case being secured on the other end and hence if you have very very simple cable management the side panels are going to bulge. The front panel is also removable and is done by simply detaching and it's detached and attached by push pins. There you go. If you want to put it back, it is just in place and press to snap on. So earlier on, I mentioned that this case is built with airflow in mind. And let me explain to you why that's so. So for the front panel, as you can see, behind the cutout design, you have a full mesh, which means unobstructed airflow in the front panel. And if you move on to look at the top panel, it is the same. It has got full mesh on the top panel here, as well as, I'm not sure if you could see it, on the bottom panel as well here. So the mesh panels are attached magnetically right for the top panel whilst on the front panel the mesh are not removable they are on the panel itself now when we look into the case you will see that there is a single 120 millimeters fan that is included within the case and in fact Deepcool has released the matrix 40 3fs which will come pre-installed with 320 millimeters rgb fans two in the front panel and one at the back well what we have today is the base model and we will have the flexibility to accentuate it our style so here we go let's build this pc now and discuss compatibility as we go along so let's start off with motherboard so this case supports both mini itx as well as uh, micro ATX motherboards. So here we are using the Gigabyte B550i RS Pro and we already have the CPU installed and here we're using AMD's Ryzen 5 3600 and as well as the RAM cards are already in there as well. 
and for RAM cards we're using Corsairs Vengeance LPX um, 32 gigabyte so let's get this into the case so within the case itself there are indications of where you will mount your mini ITX motherboard or micro ATX motherboards So now that we've got the motherboard in there, next step, let's move on to power supply. So for power supply, we are using NZXT's C850. That should be enough to power build today. So the power supply goes into the lower section of the case, which is, let me show it to you, which will be at the rear of the case, at the bottom in this compartment. For power supply, what I usually do is I fit in all the necessary cables into the points before we install the power supply into the case so that you don't have to struggle to get your hands between the tiny compartment at the base in order to put in the PSU cables. So this case is only compatible with ATX power supply. If you've got SFX power supply, unless it comes with a convertible to ATX bracket, otherwise there are generally more options for ATX power supplies and they are definitely priced more attractively. So now that we've got the power supply in, next step we're going to install the graphics card. So this case supports up to 4 slots graphics card with a maximum length of 320mm and here we are using the Galaxy GeForce RTX 3070 Series Gamer you can see that's a really beautiful graphics card and so here we go so now we've got the motherboard in we've got the power supply in and we've got the graphics card in Next up, let's look at what we do with cooling. So here we are using the AIO cooler from ID Cooling. So this is ID Cooling's Auraflow, 240mm. We've got the bracket already on the motherboard, so we're just going to install this in. However, I think we will replace the fans on the AIO cooler as, uh, as we are trying to introduce this this is deep cools mf120 gt led fan and it's got this really unique cross frame led with dual layer fan blades that can deliver fan speed up to 1800 rpm so these are available as individual fans or in packs of three as you can see here and since we are going to add the same design fans for this case i'm just going to replace this on the air cooler for a consistent look so here I have removed the fans already and uh, there are a couple locations where you can mount the air radiator in this case so of course we have the upper panel on the top which can support 240 millimeters or alternatively you can do it in the front panel which can allow you to have a radiator up to 280 millimeters. These are the same areas that you can use for case fans. And if you are using case fans with a CPU air cooler, then you can have 220 millimeters fans on above and 320 millimeters fans in the front panel. So what we're going to do in this build is to have the full 320 millimeters fans in the front to maximize the RGB look and we're going to have the AIO radiator on the top panel so before you install the fans because the fans naturally comes with all this little wiring right you want to make sure that the wiring goes out of your way after you've installed the AIO cooler such that it helps makes cable management easier so for this build we are going to be mounting the AIO cooler on the top so what you need to take note of the arrangement so in this case this portion of the radiator is going to be facing the front right and we bear that in mind 
so that when we mount the fence so that when we mount the fence on the radiator you could orientate your fence such that the cables on the fan faces the back of the case so that you will have an easier cable management thereafter. So let's just quickly install the two fans that we have here. Now that we've got the fans in, let's install the AIO cooler in. Now before we do that, we'll have to put the thermal paste on the CPU. Here we're using Cooler Master's Master Gel Pro. So let's just do it quickly. So to mount the radiator on the top, we simply remove the magnetic mesh panel. So now we're done with the AIO cooler, we can put the magnetic mesh panel back, right? We position the radiator fan such that the fans will be exhausting air through the top of the case. And the intent is to have the three fans in the front panel of the case to be pulling air in to be exhausted from the top panel as well as the rear. So let's move along to install all the three fans and change out this one for a consistent look. So here we've finally gotten all four of the MF120 GT fans in the case. That's after loads and loads of screwing for me. And I would say that one of the key concerns when I was installing these fans was the fact that I was using a mini ITX motherboard, which means that I do have less supports for fibers RGB as well as for fans. So the interesting thing about the MF120 GT fans is that it does come with these connectors. This, for example, is to connect to fans which allows you to connect four fans to one of these extensions. So what you could do is just plug in these extensions to the motherboard and then you have access to four fans from here. The same goes for the RGB. They do have a connector for RGB and you have the option of connecting this using this cable like this to the motherboard or connecting by another cable which uses the SATA port for power. So this really helps a lot when you're using a mini ITX motherboard. Next up would be the storage. For hard drives, you can mount up to two 3.5 inch storage drive in this bracket here at the back of the case next to the power supply. Or alternatively, you can mount one 2.5 inch HDD over here at the back of the case or on the side. So now let me quickly put all the cables together and sort out cable management and then we'll be able to conclude what we really think about this case. So we've finished connecting to the cables, we've finished cable management and now this is the final product of what a PC build with the Deep Cools Matrix 40 looks like. So let's talk through what we think of this case. So the first reason why I really like this case is of course the crazy price tag that I was talking about earlier on. This case is retailing at 49 Singapore dollars, which is unbelievable, right? It's a superb price tag, absolutely crazy and suitable for a budget build which lets you keep your money aside to spend it more on components such as CPU or GPU or even just splurging on accessories to create this RGB look. So I have not shown you the inside of the case. Let me just turn it around. So you will see that I've added a GPU stand. This is from Deep Cool as well and it's got RGB lights in it. The RTX 3000 series GPUs tend to sag because it's relatively heavy. So this stand makes a perfect um, companion in this case. So if you look at the rear fan, we continue to see the X frame. So there's the mesh front panel because the mesh is just so fine. We do continue to see the RGB lights and the cross frame from the, the deep cool fans as well. Now if we turn to the reverse, the MF120 GT has RGB lights on both sides of the fans. So this is really pretty and importantly, nothing of this build feels cheap or looks cheap. 
On top of that, at this price point, it's not as if this build is designed with limitations to accommodate only a simple build. In fact, you continue to have the flexibility in choice of motherboards between Mini-ITX and Micro-ATX motherboards. You have the choice to accommodate large GPUs because of the space in this Micro-ATX case, as well as could leverage your ATX power supply, which is a lot cheaper and more options out there for you to choose from. Additionally, there are tons of options for storage drives, especially for 3.5 storage drive, which are still commonly found in PC builds these days. Now, the second reason why I like this case is the airflow. So you've got the tempered glass panel on the side. However, we've got the front panel fans pulling air in to be exhausted by the top panel and the rear fan. And the top panel is just a matter of science, right? Hot air rises and therefore it's suitable to have hot air being exhausted from the top as well as the rear which allows for a smooth airflow, a slightly positive airflow, I'd say, for this case. Now, the third reason why I like this case is the RGB potential. So you guys would have known from my PC builds that I really would give up a lot of things to include RGB in a case. And for a micro ATX case, this is doing very, very well. I mean, if you look at the price point once again, it gives you so much more budget room to spend on RGB fans, spend on strip RGB lights if you like it, to further enhance the look of your gaming PC build. Well, let me know what you think of this case. If you too think that this could be the choice for a RGB micro ATX case, since you could save all that money and put them into RGB components to enhance the look of your PC that setup. All right, now before you go, please do give us a like if you did enjoy this video and subscribe to our channel if you've not already done so. It will mean a lot to us. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.